one more quick announcement. Um, last week I got a message from a uh, mom of a friend of mine that I haven't seen for a couple of years who, who married, got married about 12 months ago. And um, she asked me if I would contact him because he was going through something really, really hard. And they had had a child that uh, was eight weeks along and they lost it. And sometimes it's one of the hardest things. I don't think sometimes, it's always <clears throat> so hard. And um, that same next day actually, Caitlin came to me and said, you know, um, Aaron, uh, there's a book coming out that he's done uh, the art in, and, uh, and it seemed like the right time uh, to release that. So I'm going to have Aaron tell you about wow. it. Yeah, so my friend uh, Leah Viss, she wrote a, she came to me, she's an author, Christian gal, and who had three miscarriages. She said, will you illustrate this book for me? So she hired me to, to write this book, or I mean, to illustrate this book called um, Our Heaven Baby. Wow. Yeah. So it's, uh, there's just like lots of like groups that talk about miscarriage, but um, usually it, le it ends like with like some kind of like hopelessness. <laughs> like, <laughs> Or, and grieving is good, but there's not a lot of communities out there that offer an opportunity to point them to Jesus through the miscarriage and point them to hope. And so this book kind of <clears throat> uses a child's imagination of what heaven might be like and then places Jesus in that imagination. And so it's really simple, but um, it's a beautiful gift for people that are going and struggling through it and it actually gives them some kind of context for heaven and Jesus. Um, so it, Miscarriage is such a crazy thing. Um, my family miscarried a child, and we dedicated it to this book to the, my child and to the three others um, of Leavis that are now in heaven right now in the presence of Jesus. But miscarriage is weird because um, it's the only like death that we don't ever really get to like have a funeral for and grieve over, and it's so awkward, and the community doesn't really understand it. Oh, I'm so sorry you lost your child. But... There, there's no like mourning with usually. It's usually an isolated thing. So this kind of brings you out of isolation into hope and gives you some kind of context for that. There's like nothing out there like that. So I, I was really honored to be a part of it. So there's books here. So um, the the church is, is um, we've got 17 that 17 that you were able to bring today. Well, yeah, sorry. a few. Yeah. Um, if you have had a miscarriage and, and you just it's something that you would like or you you know we want you just to take one if. Um, you know, if you can, um, they're going to be available for uh, a fee. Uh, and But the church will cover it. If, if you take one and you need one and you feel like it can be helpful to someone, um, it's not so expensive that the church won't cover it. So um, they're in the donut room or whatever we call that fellowship room. Um, the donut holy room. Um, okay. and, and speaking of holy... Wow, what a transition. <laughs> Carl, come on up. Those <laughs> <laughs> donut holes. Uh, Lord, I thank you for this guy. Um, honestly, Father, what a gift he is to me and to all of us. And Father, I pray this morning that, that you would continue to move among us this morning as you speak through Carl. Lord, I just pray that you would put weight, the weight that you want to, on his words. And Lord, that our hearts would be changed. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'm looking at, looking at Daniel. <laughs> Produces those videos. I told him he's fired. <laughs> this, you know, all churches are different, and uh, and this church is unique. Uh, we're one of the only churches that you'll go to that where they'll mock the disabled. <laughs> and, uh, that's a real special characteristic. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Um, <laughs> I hope you're proud of yourself. Um, this morning, uh, I'm going to... <laughs> Hello? Okay. This morning, I'm going to uh, share with you about worship. And uh, I don't do this very often, but I was asked this week to do a podcast. 
uh, for vineyard worship leaders and in national. And so I started thinking about worship and what it is. And, you know, of course, when I started be, began leading worship in 1976, um, there wasn't a thing called worship. There was... They, we sang praise songs, and we did sing-alongs, and we did those kind of things. But there was there was only two books, one by Judson Cor Cornwell, yeah. and one by, uh, I can't remember the other. But uh, really, because I started to research it, and I couldn't find anything on worship. And uh, Jack Hayford hadn't written anything at that time. And so I just started, I started to do something very unique. I just started looking into the scripture. <laughs> for what the scripture said about worship. <laughs> and, uh, I found out there were over 660 verses related to worship. And they had, they, I've done a diagram of it, but there's a spectrum of it from be still and know them God to dancing hilariously before the Lord. And I don't never have like that last one. Uh, stroke or non-stroke, I've never wanted to dance. In fact, I think if I'm in heaven and the Lord sees me death dancing, He'll put a stop to it. <laughs> Just my personal perspective. Um, but anyway, they asked me to do this podcast this week, and, and I, I don't really get asked to do those kind of things anymore. And uh, so I started thinking about it. And what I do with complex... Uh, subjects and it, it worship has become very complex now and very very complicated a lot of things written on a lot of things a lot of books written a lot of websites dedicated a lot of podcasts a lot of the, a lot of information about worship uh, we're very very much uh, into information because we have this myth that if we know it then we know it if we know about it then we know it and worship really, really doesn't work that way uh, it, worship is uh, happens at a different level, and so uh, what I do is I try to go. Okay, here's this very complex subject. So what is it in its essence? What is the fundamental substance of worship? And I conclude uh, that it's something. I'll share it with you in a minute. But essence is the property or the set of properties that make an entity or substance what it fundamental fundamentally is and which has been by necessity, and without it, uh, it loses its identity. So what worship is at its essence will lose its identity if we lose that essence. Well, what's the essence? In Psalm 42 it says, As a deer pants for streams in the water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? Wow. And I think that that's the, the very essence of worship. It's a desire. It's a desire to meet with God. It, and, it's, and it really is, this, throughout Scripture, it's reflected in, in other texts. Uh, in Hebrews, it talks about, He will not be pleased if we shrink back at His coming. And later in Hebrews, it talks about entering boldly into the throne room of grace by the blood of Jesus, having been cleansed from unrighteousness. So we can come in with holy hands and, and kneel before Him and worship because He has made, he's made us clean. Um, so we're going to look at Psalm 27 today. And uh, we'll just pick a couple parts of it uh, to emphasize. But it's all good. It, it really it talks about meeting together. And you know what happens when we meet together? We experience the presence of God. Uh, we've come here from all different places and all different situations, and but we can meet together at the foot of the cross and for worship of Jesus. And uh, and so there is strength in numbers. There's strength in being with one another. I read on Facebook this week um, from a girl I know. I've known her for over 30 years, and she's been a worship leader, songwriter. I think I sang some of her songs on some recordings. And and basically, the essence of what she said is, I give up. I don't want to sing these songs anymore. They're not true. God doesn't come through for me. God doesn't rescue me. So she was really honest in the things she wrote. And some people go, oh my God, how can she say that? 
Well, because she's a human being. She's been suffering from sickness for, for all these 30 years. And she gets discouraged. And she shares, was just shared honestly. First time I've ever seen anything by her. Um, but there's hope for her. Uh, I'll, I'll be contacting her and sharing with her a little bit about some things. But one of the things is that we've just gone, come too far. We're too deep in this thing to give up. We, yes. <laughs> there's just no place else to go, man. We've shot the wad right here, man. And so uh, we might as well stick with it to the end, you know. And I know that there are a lot of people that go through times of doubt and insecurity and fear and, and actually wonder whether God really exists. God, does God answer our prayers? Does He hear our prayers? Does He respond to our prayers? Now, of course, at our best time, of course, we believe that's absolutely true. But there, at our worst times, there are times of doubt. And, uh, and, and, and the worst, the, the environment for doubt and uh, to be less sure of the truth is in isolation. And I cannot tell you that that is never one on the enemy's list. He wants to isolate you. He wants to separate you from the fellowship of the saints. He does not want you to hear words of faith, words of truth that will strengthen you and build you up. And, you know, I get strengthened, built up by, by you and what, what you express in your faith. Uh, and Aaron, my friend Aaron, uh, just uh, his authenticity, yeah. Yeah. and, well, he lacks in passion. <laughs> but I'm hoping to help him in that area. <laughs> oh my God! I had a, I had a, just a desire, just a little inkling to call Aaron this week, and uh, yeah, just to call him. And, and I really didn't. I thought to get his answer machine. I had something I was going to say to him, but I got him. And it happens. I, I, I called him. The second he hung up from a very difficult, very difficult conversation and phone call with somebody. And so it was that opportunity to share with him, just encourage him. And, and it did. And it was good, man. It was a good thing. And that happened to me this week with another friend. He's in Las Vegas and uh, at a convention. And those conventions should not be the most godly places to be. Uh, they're kind of the opposite of this. And so I text him uh, at about 9 o'clock at night, and I just said, how are you doing? And he, he contacted me later, and he said, that how you doing from you changed everything. Because wow. I was forgetting who I was. Wow. And that text reminded me of who I am, and what God has for me. Wow. So, man, listen to those things. Sometimes it's like a feather landing on your hand. But there's just gentle nudges from the Holy Spirit. And uh, God can do that with us. Amen. All right. <laughs> Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me and devour me, it's my enemies and my foes will stumble and fall. Though armies besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, then I will be confident. Do you ever feel like war is breaking out against you? I mean, this last year has been brutal for me uh, and my family. And, you know, you could, you could just say that war is broken out against us. Uh, the enemy wants to destroy and divide and, 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 and obliterate. Uh, my family, and uh, and there's nothing I can do, which is the best place you ever could be, where you can't do anything about it, because then you have to trust God, or give up, and I'm just too deep in this thing to give up, I'm, I'm too, too deep and too old, and I, I can't do anything else, I can't become a Buddhist or something, uh, they wouldn't accept me anyway, um, we feel that way sometimes, right? Don't we feel like the whole army is against us? I know during the, um, and I've written this in my book, there was a time when I felt like everybody had deserted me. I felt like 
I didn't have a friend in the world. And you know what? That wasn't true. But there was a, some, a whisper in my ear that told me it was, constantly. But it was never the truth. And, and, the, and the, the, what the enemy would try to do is isolate me. So I believed that lie, that he could just repeat it uninterrupted. But what we do with one another is we interrupt those lies. Yeah. And sometimes it's just a hug. Sometimes it's just a warm hello. Uh, it interrupts that static, that noise in our head that's from the enemy. Now this is the verse I wanted to land on today more than anything else. One thing I ask from the Lord and one thing I seek that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. When I come here, and I would come here even if I didn't get paid to come here. <laughs> but that's a bonus. Shut up. <laughs> Board members looked at each other. I didn't even give them that cheap. What the heck? Uh, that was an example. <laughs> that was hyperbole. Exaggeration. <laughs> no, I, I really love what we have. And I, I honestly and truthfully cannot believe that we, we don't have hundreds of people. Because there's something about what we do here. And it's so unique in, 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 in that we, we meet with God. I mean, I can see some of you meeting with God here. I see, I look around, I see it happening. I see some of you just weeping and, uh, and, uh, and just being relieved from, from the, the pain and the, the suffering and the, the uh, chaos in your life. And all of a sudden, you get a glance, glance a glimpse of the Lord yeah. while we worship. And, kind of lose it, huh? There are people that just lose it, and 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 they just because they feel so touched, they feel so so not alone, because they experience the presence and power of God, which is to restore and is to heal, and so there's nothing I'd rather do. There's no place I'd rather be than with a group of believers that 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 believe, yeah. <laughs> that aren't here just to hear a cute sermon. Uh, and uh, some wise word from somebody, but they come to meet with God. Amen. I mean, that's 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 the difference between <coughs> what we singing songs and worship. When we sing songs, we can sing songs about God, and we can sing things about what He does, and it can build our faith. But there are songs that happen that where we meet with God, where the words say what our hearts say. And we connect with God at a level that, that we just couldn't produce in any other way. And so when I share this week in the podcast, that will be one of the things I'll share, is that what, what happened with us 40 years ago in my sister's living room is there was a moment where we're singing together. We just sang a lot of songs. We sang like, I don't know, sometimes we play, uh, sing for 60, 70 minutes. And we didn't have a lot of songs back then. So we sang the same song over and over again. And one time we were singing sing the song, Praise you, Father. Bless you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, thank you for being here, being here, Lord. And all of a sudden it was like, whoosh. And nobody could move. Because the presence of God was in that room with us, meeting with us. And meeting with us in our desperate, broken, you know, de you know place that we were at. And we're Christians. I mean, most of us have been Christians for 10 years. But there was no emphasis on worshiping God and meeting with God. We talked about God. We talked about what God did at one time. We didn't talk about what God does today. But that His presence would change our perspective. And, and, and developed, I mean, created this... Movement that's now worldwide. And you can't go in a church, Catholic church, Orthodox church. You can't go in some Mormon churches and not be touched. I, a friend of mine tunes pianos. And so when he, he goes there in their houses, he was at this Mormon person's house. And he calls me, he goes, 
Carl, your song is in the Mormon hymnal. <laughs> I said, steal it. <laughs> I would like that. But, you know, I, I didn't orchestrate any of that. None of us purposely orchestrated any of that. It came out of hunger and desperation and need for, to meet with God. And so, as I thought about us this week, I thought, I know some of your stories. I know the difficulty you face. I know that you're not a, always happy and glad. And I know that you don't always have the joy, joy, joy down in your heart. <laughs> but you do. If you go deep enough, yes. you do. It's like uh, that song, It Is Well With My Soul. Uh, it doesn't talk about this literally, but it talks about the peace that we have. And, and if we go out in the ocean and the waves are churning they're 30 foot high 50 feet high if you go down deep enough it's calm and still mm -hmm. so when you get in the presence of god wow, that's it's good. calm yeah, it's still wow. there's some way that you know it's going to be okay and i will i'll communicate with my friend uh this week and the, about you know hiding in the cleft of the rock you know yeah. that's the only safe place for her you know, I, I don't mind her at all sharing what she feels. I think the Bible's full of that. Uh, and David's, uh, David says some pretty far out things. Jeremiah's the worst person on earth. Uh, he's a prophet of God who says a lot of bad things that I don't really like to read because I don't want God to think I'm saying that. Uh, but, you know, there's a thing about being honest with God, yourself, and others that's really freeing. We have a tendency to cover up what we feel, what we're dealing with, what we're afraid of. But if we shine some light on a situation, think about my friend in Las Vegas. It just shined a light on him for a moment, and he all of a sudden he remembered who he was right. and what he'd be given up if he succumbed to his thoughts and act upon them. So what we do with each other is we, we, we are, we're lights, little lights. And when we get, come together, we, we can see more clearly than when we're by ourselves. And we start licking our wounds and feeling sorry for ourselves. And I, you know, I know the feeling. I would like to do that. I mean, my son is going to prison. <sighs> He'll go in three or four weeks. He's going to be evaluated for what place he'll go to. And, and I'll be cut off from him for a while. And so I won't be able to even talk to him or even know how to get hold of him or know where he is for you know, weeks and months. What am I going to do? I'm going to seek the Lord. I'm going to find my safety in the shadow of His wings. And it's not because it's not reality. It's because it is the only reality. And everything in life will tell me that's not reality. Everything in life will tell me to do something else. But I know that the place that I need to dwell, the place I need to remain, is in His presence. Because in His presence is just fullness of joy. And even with my son, you know, I talked to him on the phone, and I, I said, listen, you were very fortunate because God interrupted you. That's why you're where you're at. Because, not because man is lost, but because God is out for you. And he's going he's gonna to apprehend you. And I believe that with all my heart. And my daughter, who has lupus and been struggling for six years, I, I continue to tell her we're praying for her, others are praying for her. And that's the only place she finds comfort and rest. So we all have things. We all have life. I mean, we all live in a very fallen world. If you do not believe that we live in a fallen world, read your newspaper. Read what happened in New York this week. Uh. Cheering, clapping, yelling, like a victory party for a, not late-term abortion, but full-term abortion. Out-and-out -out murder. Yep. And people are in a crowd, in the galleries, shouting and, and yelling and celebrating. If that's not Nineveh, and I don't know what is. 
that's not a dark place. I don't know what is. And, you know, I read a couple of people said they're going to boycott New York. And I understand the feeling. But I would say that we need Jonah in New York. We need God to raise up Jonah and people like that to speak the word of the Lord. We don't need to run from the darkness. We need to run into the darkness and bring light. And, and we, you know, somebody said, I don't want to curse. I don't, let's not just curse darkness. Let's be light. So nobody can take that away from us. You know, no matter how deprived, depraved, and, and ungodly people are, they can't take the light from you. That's right. Amen? So we don't need to fear. We, I know we, we all react, and, and, and it's really, really sickening stuff. But there's a lot of sickening, tragic stuff all around us. And that's why we're here, to be light in the midst of darkness. Well, today, I want to leave plenty of time to pray for people that maybe, maybe are a little bit like where my friend is on Facebook. Where, where she just can't even sing the songs anymore. Because, and she's a worship leader. She just can't. She just feels like it's just not true. And the enemy's winning that battle. I don't think he's going to win her. I don't think she's going to land where she is uh, emoting about. But it's where she feels horrible right now. And I, I really feel for her. But I also feel for you. And I want us to minister to one another. I want us to, to pray for one another. And if you're anywhere in that spectrum of doubt or unbelief or, or fear uh, or anxiety over life circumstances. We want to pray for you. We want to pray for each other and bless one another. So if you're in that place, I don't want to make a big deal of that. I want you to stand up, sit down. <laughs> I'm lying. <laughs> Oh, I used to do that with my church in Santa Maria. I'd say, let's all stand. And I said, oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they'd sit down. And they never stood anymore after that. <laughs> and trust me. Um, yeah, no, I asked Aaron to lead us in a song. And as we sing this song, as you feel like the Spirit of the Lord is nudging you, I want you to stand where you're at, and the people around you will bless you and pray for you. Amen. <laughs>
things you hate. Lord, we ask that you give us your presence. The promise of your presence and the safety of your the refuge that we find in you. Lord, that we can stand strong in the midst of attacks. Stand strong in the midst of distraction. And be able to keep our focus on you. And Lord, we'd hope in you. Our hope would be in you. We remain you each and every day. Lord, we bless you. We thank you. We praise you for your goodness and your faithfulness. Lord, I think of my friend who feels like she wants to get up. And I think of you, what your word says, that you remain faithful even when we're faithless. So Lord, that is such good news because we're not always faithful. Lord, we bless you and we thank you for your faithfulness to us, for your pursuit of us, for your desire to know us, that we might know you. So we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Oh, I want to tell you something. There's a difference. You can tell when I'm having a good foot day and when I'm having a bad feet day. I sit when I when I'm sitting, and I have a, I'm having, I've had about six good feet days. So, but I I can fall anymore. So be careful. All right, God bless. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, blowing. Yeah, blowing. <laughs>